Hey guys, today we're going to talk about research studies and their dirty little secrets, okay? Now, when people want to find the truth of something, and they want to find some science, they want to see some scientific study researched, published, that will validate um, the claim that is made about it, right? Now, what you need to realize is there are several really big problems in the area of research. One question that I had was, why is it that the industry-sponsored studies always seem to be positive? Like the studies done by drug companies, they always come out to be really good. Why is that? And the answer is this. They had the option to publish what they wanted. They could cherry pick what data that they wanted to publish and omit certain studies that didn't come out that good. They can omit certain studies that gave side effects to make it look really good. And this would also explain why so many drugs in the past were all of a sudden founded to create all these problems in society. And then there was all sorts of class action suits that eventually caused that drug to be taken off the market. Um, like let's just take DES, for example, diethylstabestrol, used for 30 years until they found it, it actually caused serious, serious problems, uh, birth defects, infertility, and the list goes on and on. But in 2005, the US Department of Health established a new rule which increased transparency. So drug companies now are forced to publish all of their data, not partial studies, all of their data. Now, one of the problems is getting them to comply with it because based on a survey that I saw, it was like 97% of them said they would comply. But when you look at their policy records, they say they will consider it, okay? But whether they do or whether they don't, um, this is the website that you can go to to supposedly see all the data. It's called clinicaltrials.gov. Now in 2018, uh, Dr. DeBroff uh, compiled all the data on statins before 2005 and after 2005. And he wanted to look at what was the actual benefit of mortality? Did it provide any benefit to help people to live longer? And he found absolutely no, not one single benefit of increasing your life in any way, shape, or form. So all this powerful data, this evidence that so many doctors were relying on to show the positive benefits of taking a statin will improve cardiovascular function. So basically, it did not show the benefits that they were claiming. And there's a lot of other similar findings with uh, psychiatric drugs for depression as well. Another little dirty secret that I want to talk about is something called the run-in period, which basically allows the study to extract, delete, the first six weeks of data based on non-compliance. Now, I'm gonna put a link down below to show you what that actually means. What, why would someone non-comply to a study, right? Well, you guessed it, side effects, lots of side effects. So they have the option of taking that initial data for six weeks out of the study and then like starting the study after you eliminate these side effects. You think that might taint the results of the research? And then there is just the structure of the study itself. Over 1 million articles that were published since 1946 regarding diet and health used questionnaires. These are memory-based methods, okay? They're not reliable. There's too many variables. You're gonna ask someone on a questionnaire about what they ate in the last year, and you're just gonna get all sorts of random things. Not to mention they're probably on a high carbohydrate diet, which affects their memory in the first place. So the next time you're watching the news or reading something online and they mention quoting a study, um, see if it's a questionnaire. So nowadays it's really hard and difficult to not only find good studies that were done, but to interpret them correctly because it takes time. You have to have a medical dictionary sitting beside you and to also read the actual study, not an interpretation of the study secondhand. And one last point I want to bring up is this. If you're in doubt about, for example, a diet or some nutritional recommendation, it's very easy to test it out on yourself to see if it works for you. And that way, you don't have to wait for the next governmental study that they're going to come out so they can tell you exactly what to eat and what not to eat. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, real quick, I have a new healthy keto eating plan for you. Just go to drberg.com. It's right on the front page. I put a link down below. Download it. It's free. Check it out.